destroy the infrastructure of the system. But what the Palestinians say is, okay, well then there has to be some sort of compensation. <laughs> they have to be paid. They have to be paid for the land that they lost, for the homes that they lost. These four issues, two states living side by side, Jerusalem being split between them, West Jerusalem becomes the capital of Israel, East Jerusalem becomes the capital of Palestine, that Israel withdraws back to its 1967 borders. And let me just say one thing about this, by the way. You know, Israel sometimes says, well, that's fine and everything. It's just that for 40 years, we've been, you know, in this occupied land. We can't just uproot. We have millions of people living in the West Bank. We can't just uproot them. In some cases, that's true. So what the Palestinians have said is, okay then, you withdraw mostly, mostly, to the 67 borders, and in those areas where you can't withdraw, we'll swap some land. You can keep that part, but you give us some land someplace else. So even this situation has been dealt with. And then the right of return, which is a sticky one. I mean, Palestinians, they get really, really passionate about this. You know, it's a sticky one. They feel like, look, these people lost their homes. They were, they were forced out of their land. They deserve to come back but they also recognize that that's really not going to happen. So this compromise to this solution, this intractable problem, what do we do about this Israeli-Palestinian conflict that's been going on since 1948? What do we do about it? Well, the truth is, is that everybody knows what we do about it. In fact, since UN 242, remember we talked about that? This has been the law. And even more interestingly, almost every single government in Israel and amongst the Palestinians has accepted this two-state solution, this roadmap to the two-state solution. For decades, decades, this has been the answer to this problem. So what the hell? What's going on then? Why are we as far from creating this two-state solution than we've ever been? Well, this is the question that President Obama was dealing with when he came into office. And he promised that unlike previous presidents, he was going to bring these two groups together and force them to deal with this issue. And in fact, after he was elected, he made a number of speeches in which he said, look, we know what we need to do. Let's get on it. The only way to do this is to get both sides to kind of give a little bit. And so what he did was he got the Arab side, not just the Palestinians, but all, what, I guess 22, 24 members of the Arab League. In other words, every Arab country in the world, not just Egypt and Jordan, but every Arab country in the world to offer Israel a unilateral peace deal in exchange for accepting these things. So in other words, in one swoop, Israel would be at peace with all of its neighbors. On the Israeli side, all they had to do in order to achieve this was to cease settlement activity. We've talked about this before. Every single day, since the first day of Israel's existence in 1948, they have been gobbling up more and more land. Well, of course, they're, they're growing. They're more and more uh, Jews from all over the world are, are moving to Israel and making it their home. They don't have houses. They need houses. They need land. Where is the land? Well, Israel is more or less out of land. So what has it been doing? It's been taking Palestinian land. That's what we mean by the occupation. These settlements have gobbled up massive, massive amounts of well, what was supposed to be the future Palestine. And in fact, that's their deliberate purpose. There's a phrase among certain Israeli uh, politicians called facts on the ground. What they mean by that is, yeah, we're fine with the two-state solution. Not all Israeli politicians think this, but this is a pretty standard view in, in the Israeli political uh, circles. We accept this situation, 
But the longer it takes to get this, the more of this land will be ours. So let's just sort of drag our feet. Let's take our time. What's the rush? There's no rush. You know, every day we're getting a little bit more. Every day it's going to be harder to, to remove us from this land. President Obama, of course, made a number of speeches. One in Cairo, he made a, you know, some huge uh, promises uh, here in the United States too, in which he said that he demands that Israel cease all settlement activity, all of it, now, without question. Even what Israel euphemistically refers to as natural growth, what they mean by that is that, look, we already have this settlement, we already have 100,000 people living in the settlement, but they're having children. So that settlement, you know, we won't make any new settlements, but we have to expand this settlement. And Obama said, unlike any other president before him, no, absolutely not. We want an immediate, unconditional freeze of all settlement activity in order for us to come together and talk. So. From the Arabs, he got this promise. He demanded this promise for you know, peace in exchange for the two-state solution. And from the Israelis, he demanded this settlement. But something unusual happened. Something that people thought would happen, but no one actually you know, really was prepared for it. And that is that Israel basically told the president to go screw himself. I mean, really, that's sort of the diplomatic, you know, way of putting it. The Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, quite a radical himself, basically said, no. Now, the reason this is so shocking is that for decades, as you know, the United States has been the primary protector of Israel. So sometimes we joke that Israel is the 51st state. We give Israel $3 billion a year. That's your money. Your, the taxes that you pay to your federal government for your jobs, $3 billion of that every year goes to Israel. <coughs> and of course, you're talking about, again, a first world country, not a third world country. So it was assumed that when the president of a nation that gives $3 billion to another nation, makes a request of that nation, the nation would say, well, yes, of course, whatever it is that you want, I mean, obviously. And yet, that reversal, that sort of experience in which Israel basically said, no, no, we're not even going to slow them down. In fact, just this week, uh, residents about two or three thousand Palestinian residents living in East Jerusalem, which is not yet the capital of Palestine because there's no Palestine, about three thousand residents living in a really poor area of East, well, all of Palestine is poor, but a particularly poor area of East Jerusalem were given eviction notices by Israel. They were told that their homes are going to be destroyed and in their place they were going to create a park. Now, guess who that park is for? It's not for Palestinians. It's not like we're going to build you a nice park. It's for Israel, which means that they are now expanding more and more into East Jerusalem. East Jerusalem, which according to this agreement, is supposed to be the future capital of the Palestinian state. So far from even obeying Obama's demand to stop, they've accelerated their settlement activity. <coughs> and of course, as you can imagine, the response from President Obama was fierce. He called the... the